This is the final leg of my 20,000 mile journey around Europe, and I'm on my way to the heel of Italy. But before we get there, I'm in Europe's playground for the super rich. Party town, the south of France. If you added up all the money on that tiny stretch of coastline down there from, say, the Ile Saint Marguerite off Cannes, past the Cap d'Antibes to Nice, you'd have, well, tons. I mean, just loads of it. So, uh, let's get down there, shall we? When I arrive, I shall be mixing with the international white bankers. I shall drink at all the right places. Do you have anything uh, more expensive than champagne? I shall eat weeds at 30 pounds a leaf. And I shall pay using my vast wad of credit cards. Jean-Louis Oudwicom. No. <laughs> Then I shall go for a swim in the crystal waters of the Med. Yes, there's room to breathe down here in the south of France. But unfortunately, there's no room to breathe out. The problem here is that on your square inch of superheated sand, you're cut off from the land by a railway line, and you can't really go swimming because the Med is not crystal, is it? It's a big lake full of Egyptian and Greek turds. And then there's the traffic. Look at this. Look at this. Of course, the rich have found a way to avoid all this hubbub. They float around on the excrement in boats. Now this is, um, oh yes, this is Michael Schumacher's boat here. Uh, this is the one that was rented by Bruce Willis for the Cannes Film Festival. He's left it in an awful state. Uh, and this one here, actually, very interesting story. It's uh, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman's. They're having a, a bit of a, of a battle over it um, in the divorce. Crikey, look, a, a Sea Rover 640. That's, uh, that's Mohammed Al Fayed's new cruiser. So, who the hell do these belong to? This is the first rule of life in the south of France. No matter how much money you turn up with, someone else always turns up with more. And these days, the people with more money than anyone else are the Russians. To understand just how rich they are, I went for a little cruise with leading Riviera lawyer, Pierre Cami. So the wall came down and bang, they were here. Yeah, immediately when they can go away from, uh, from Russia, they immediately arrive here in Monaco, in Cannes, in the airports with, uh, in their own luggage, cash, big amount of cash, one million French francs or two million French francs. Believe me, they know how to have fun and how to spend the money. <laughs> Sometimes there is a, a ring of, of, of Russian, they rent a boat and uh, they spend around 1 million French francs a day for a big boats. 100,000 pounds? Yeah, a day. a day. So what were they like? A bit flash? It's nothing impossible for them in their mind. You know, they came at the beginning in, a, in my office, for instance, they say, I would like to become a resident in, in Monaco. Right, sir, but it's not so easy to become a resident in Monaco. No problem. How many I have to pay for the prince? How much do you have to pay for the yeah, prince? I have a luggage with a lot of cash. I can bring in some cash. Even. Oh, sorry, it's not possible like you that. You can't buy the prince. You can't buy it. Really it. No, I'm sure it's possible. <laughs> no, sir, it's not possible. Ah, you're not the good lawyer. I'm going to find the right one. This vast influx of Russian money has had an effect on property prices. 
I've come to meet an estate agent who's going to show me around this house just outside Cannes. So, it only has three bedrooms, but it's just been sold for 15 million pounds. Ooh, that's quite a view. That is... Ville Saint Marguerite. Yes, you get a lovely view, but only if you look out of the window. You see the Russians are nouveau riche, and they've taken over from the Arabs, who were the nouveau riche down here in the 80s, and the German scrap metal dealers, who were the nouveau riche before that. You only ever get nouveau riche people down here, and this has had an effect on decor. Yes. Ooh. Whoa, that's, um... Well, what is that? It's a fantastic dining room. Fantastic is one word. Mm -hmm. Do you like this? Uh, it's impressive. It is <laughs> impressive? There's another word? <laughs> yes. And this is the... Master bathroom. I'm kind of getting used to the mirrors now, although this room... I don't know why, but it's just sort of popped this image into my head, and it's an image of, of Paul Daniels. Have you ever seen a house down here with quite so many mirrors in it? Mm, no, this is the... Most mirrored house? Yes, most probably, yeah. Of course, if the Russians stuck to butchering houses, that would be fine. But there are Russian criminals down here who've taken to butchering one another, as local crime journalist Roger Bianchini explains. They do the prostitution as we did here for 50 years. That is, a very violent prostitution, very violent, very violent, that does not give anything to the girls. And they are like slaves. How bad are the Russian criminals here? They have the reputation exécuter leurs crimes non pas à la manière euh, méditerranéenne, c'est-à-dire avec une balle dans la tête, euh, de manière propre si l'on peut dire. Et notamment, euh, il y a deux ans, on a découvert trois cadavres de, 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 de deux hommes et une femme de trafiquants de drogue, de petits trafiquants de drogue qui est dans l'arrière-pays euh, niçois. Et euh, la manière dont ils ont été tués, de manière très sauvage, de manière horrible, ils étaient complètement... Euh, complètement euh, dépecé, c'est-à-dire qu'on l'avait ouvert le ventre, sorti euh, les, les, les boyaux, on avait coupé la tête, elle avait été jetée de l'autre côté, on avait coupé les mains, euh, tout ça, une sauvagerie gratuite, parce que c'était après avoir tué les, on tue les gens, mais après on leur fait ça, à quoi ça sert Reiki, I think it's time I went to Italy. I decided to take the Alpine route, and it was magnificent. I kept having to stop to admire the view. Look at all those hills, all littered with the bodies of James Bond baddies. And all the place names on the signs, Turin, Geneva, Monte Carlo. It's like something out of a... out of a Robert Ludlum novel. But then I went through a tunnel, emerged over the border in Italy, and everything went into fast forward. You do sometimes get the impression that these corners on Italian motorways are not here to go round anything, they're just here to make the driving experience more fun. See, look at this road. It's not a road, it's a racetrack. You've got to get your lines right. Swing out to the left to try and get the apex of this corner. And I'm not overtaking this Vauxhall, I'm racing it. <laughs> this is like driving around the Nürburgring. Damn, I'm being overtaken by a Renault Scenic. This is the first serious workout that the E-Types had. You get a sense of utter lawlessness here, but there are some rules. Take Lake Como, for example. It has a speed limit. It's not the 10 miles an hour we have on Lake Windermere. It is, in fact, 70 miles an hour. <laughs> How Italian's that? setting the speed limit 30 miles an hour faster than a fast boat can go. <laughs> 70. There is, however,
Oliver, an Italian paradox. The people here love to drive fast, but they never get anywhere on time. So I've come here to meet a man who will explain why this is so. I'm going to give him one more day. He never showed up. But then he wouldn't, because behind the histrionic facade, Italy is home to something called the Slow City Movement. Set up to halt the spread of globalisation, it campaigns for sleepy towns full of family-run shops. It's having some success too, though pedestrian zones are still confusing the locals. The slow city movement sprang from the slow food movement, which has declared all-out war on the American hamburger. I went to have a chat with its leading lights, but there was a problem. I couldn't get a word in edgeways. No, no. Can I just ask one thing? It's on the contrary. Italian is more contrary. Pardon, sorry. <laughs> It's impossible. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right, no more wine, everybody. <laughs> That's I'm not the <laughs> How many people are in the Slow Food Society? Is it just a very small thing, or have you got? No, no. Slow Food has uh, uh, forty thousand active members. Which, oh, so it's uh, a big deal, this. Uh, sure, it's very big. And uh, so you're campaigning <laughs> to have a little town, a little village where. You've got a man who makes pasta and a guy who does really good meat, and and that's the kind of thing you want to see. Yeah, they want, we want to preserve, because the big difference between Italy and England is the quality of life in the small towns. You won't find McDonald's in the small towns. Has yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, there no. isn't. No. There's no. no McDonald's here. No. The Slow Food Society encourages people to make food and wine in the old-fashioned way, even if it is illegal. This veal sausage, for instance, which is eaten raw, would almost certainly break every food safety standard in the EU's book. And the same goes for this cheese, which comes with a thatched roof. So why can't you embrace supermarkets and convenience foods? Speaking supermarkets does not pay attention to what quality. They are just interested to make big, big volumes and to sell a cheap price. And uh, why is cheap not good? If you make all these savings, you have a, a meat which, which cannot be good, which is very similar to sheep. Yeah, 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 it's, uh, it's true. The problem for the Occident and the third world is another. They say that today now the problem is not that the poor cannot eat. It's the problem today in Western countries, especially among poor, is that we, we eat too much and we are obese. So the problem is to try to eat less but pay more for the, the single food. It then emerged they'd never actually tried cheap convenience food, so I went to their kitchen to prepare a few delicacies I'd brought from home. Show these people what, uh, what cooking is all about. Starting with a Vesta beef curry. 450 millilitres. You've just guessed, haven't you? Right, here we go. And they won't be able to tell the difference They'll think I've made it fresh out of lightly killed cow with delicate herbs and spices from the subcontinent. What I thought I'd give them for the second course is an all-day breakfast. It contains methyl cellulose, uh, bacon-style slice. So sure what that is. Uh, more methyl cellulose, carolinin. And you don't get any of this, frankly, in, in their food. Look at that! Have you ever seen anything so nutritious? You, you're lying out of your ass, aren't you? How about this? Peel off lead, done that. Remove sachet, done that. Pour on boiling water to water fill level. Do you know how to do... Do you know what... No, that's a silly question. Um, this Italian kitchen has never seen anything like this before. Be assured of that. Get rid of all the lumps. Now, what I'm going to add is something that I brought from Holland. Chocolate sprinkles. Beautiful. Yeah. Hey, bellissimo. Look at it. An English all-day breakfast. Look at that. 
and just puncture the skin. A delicious, slightly burnt supper. So, what did they think of my feast? He's going to be sick. Give me good to eat you. Porta del acqua, per favore, che mi nota. Vieni, acqua, per favore. È meglio, di better in the life. Ho iniziato la dieta. E tu vai, tu vai. La carne qui non parte. The meat is garbage. This is superb. The queen has this every night. This is la regina. Queen, the queen loves a vesta. There's much we could learn from the slow food movement, but we haven't got time. There's another thing about eating out in Italy. You never see a sign saying children welcome. They're always welcome. There is no word over here for babysitter. Mind you, even if there was, she'd probably never turn up. My guest did, though, an Italian professor of sociology. There's one thing, though, that is really confusing me about Italy. Everybody drives at a million miles an hour, but nobody ever gets to where they're supposed to be going, because I make arrangements to meet people. They're never there. Because, you see, going fast, driving fast is an act of liberation. Being sharp and punctual at appointment is an act of slavery. I ask you, why are you so much in time? What's, what's wrong with you? You could have come in an, half an hour later, you know, that's all right. In fact, I'm Naples an hour. In Palermo, even half a day. <laughs> and of course, everybody is so stylish, so well dressed. What is important, what is basic, is the way you look and uh, uh, the way you are looked at. And what is really prevailing about upon everything in this country is the bella figura, the fine figure, the fine appearance, you know. A bella figura is something really that you can be hungry, you can have a tremendous amount of family problems, breaking up, you know, your wife, your husband. But when you go out, you have to walk like a queen. Okay? And there's no lads nights out here, are there? No, no, no. Being drunk is not in accordance with bella figura. Young people, they could not go around with their beautiful suits, with their, you know, their, their Armani kind of thing, and being drunk at the same time, because when you're drunk, you have no control over your aesthetic appearance. This brings us on to another word that doesn't exist in Italy. Shell suit. Um, avete un vestito uh, di uh, conchiglia? Co? Conchiglia. Un vestito di conchiglia? Conchiglia è il nome della, dello stilista o...? È uh, um, lucente in nylon, sintetico. No, no. No? no? Ok, grazie. No. Looking good in Italy is even more important than looking where you're going. Astonishingly, the Italians spend the same on beauty products every year as we in Britain spend on education. And most of these products are used here, in the dressing room for the Miss Over contest, a series of beauty competitions for women aged over 30, over 40, over 50, and even over 60. How old? I'm 41, yeah. It's the same as me. Yeah. We're the same and we've, we've matured differently. Uh. To be honest, some of them looked a million lira, but others have the bella figura off to a T. How old are you now? Ruth, I know that's rude. 50. 50. Yeah, it's a true. <laughs> Go on, show me an ID card. I... The one that is super, oh, I'm sorry. Get an it's ID card. I don't believe you're 50. <laughs> ID card, Roma, place of birth, Roma. Where's the date of birth? Here, yeah. 51. Yeah. That's a story you're going to win. It's incredible. <laughs> In Britain these days, the only people who go to beauty contests are radical feminists in dungarees, but here, half the town turned up to gawp at the 
cryogenic wrinklies with their reupholstered breasts and their Botox boats. The Italians will use any excuse to print up a sash. There's Miss IT, Miss Smile, Miss Fizzy Water, Miss Truffle, and my favourite of them all, Miss Furniture. Even the men get in on the act. This facsimile of Don Johnson was recently voted Mr. Single, which I suppose makes him Italy's most eligible twat. Is there an interview? Yes. Yeah. Everyone in beauty competition says, I like music, I like dancing. Yeah. You must think of something else. And don't say world peace. My advice to the poor girl was wasted, though. She couldn't possibly win. She was wearing trousers. Last year's Miss Italy was on TV, live, for four consecutive nights. And at two in the morning, this one was still going strong. So I went to bed. Alone. So far then, we've established that the Italians eat well, drive fast, don't turn up and like ogling women. No surprises at all, in fact. So what about the Italian army? Well, I've come to Venice to spend some time with a cavalry division. And is it me? Or are those tanks going backwards? They are, aren't they? The men and women of this division may look like normal squaddies, but beneath the uniforms, let's not forget they're Italian. And that makes them very, very different than the squaddies we're used to in Britain. It's Saturday lunchtime and I've just bought myself, from this vending machine, a beer. But look at the Italian soldiers here. They could have bought a beer, but they've decided to drink coffee instead. We may laugh about the Italian army, but the fact is that in any conflict, you'd want them on your side, especially at mealtimes. We will have a first course based on uh, pasta with uh, salmon sauce. The salmon sauce? The salmon sauce. Yeah. Okay. A second course based on veal, salmon trout, salmon trout. trout. Yeah. also vegetables. So no chips? No chips. No <laughs> chips. Sorry. After my delicious lunch with wine, they took me to the proving grounds for a burn up. And I got my first surprise since arriving in Italy. It's going forwards! Predictably being Italian, these are the fastest main battle tanks in the world. With a turbocharged V12 engine, they can do more than 50 miles an hour. It's almost unbelievable to think that the armour stretches from there to about, well, there. But we are seriously shifting. I've got to go down to the south of Italy now, so yeah. I was just wondering, could I borrow one of your tanks? Because it's a bit wild down there. Of course, no. And I, think, I don't think you need a tank to visit our south. Oh. That is normally full of tourists during summertime. And, and not only. And mafia. And I've got to go there, and you won't lend me a tank. No, no, no. Really? You don't just go down to the wild and supposedly violent south of Italy without being prepared. Which is why I decided to make a detour and stop off in Rome. This is the Gladiator School. Sadly, instead of being held in the Colosseum, 
It's to be found on a small industrial estate by a railway line. But even so, it's the latest craze among 21st century Romans. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Maximus Crow, General of the Northern Armies. <laughs> It's tempting to think of these people as Morris men in frocks. But those swords are real and they hurt, which is why I was a bit alarmed when they made me take all my armor off. Kick you in the balls, it's much easier. <laughs> I was given just half an hour's training. Bollocks. And then it was time for my first scrap. Something I wasn't taking desperately seriously. I can see right up that senator's skirt from here. Blokes can't wear skirts, they don't look right. And then, with no warning whatsoever, a man came at me with a net. You've got over. Okay, now you're dead. Jesus! <laughs> Think of what you've done to my nose, man! <laughs> my nose! Big, big nose. What have you done to my nose? <laughs> and so, I set out for the south of Italy, fully prepared in case a Mafia hitman leapt from the side of the road, brandishing a net. But I needn't have worried. There were no hitmen. There was no one at all. This is extraordinary. I haven't even been buzzed by the traditional Italian 14-year-old on a moped. So have they all been beaten to death with nets? Have they been kidnapped and eaten? What's going on here? In this town, the population has halved in the last 30 years. And it's not because people have moved to the big cities. No. According to the local mayor, it's because they're not being born. Quindi il tasso di natalità, il tasso di natalità è, è sceso, attualmente siamo all'incirca su, sulle 10 nascite l'anno. Eh, è così da qualche anno e quindi è un dato che ci preoccupa. Eh, noi appunto come amministrazione comunale abbiamo pensato di sostenere con degli assegni comunali annui per 5 anni eh, i nuovi nati, eh, partendo da un milione a figlio per 5, per 5 anni in caso di primogenito, 2 milioni nel caso del secondo figlio, 3 milioni nel caso del terzo figlio. Ma tu sei un buon looking chap, why don't you get out and about, you know, with your you know, do some stuff. Io mi sono già dato da fare molto con mia moglie. E mi darei da fare anche ulteriormente, soltanto che anche le donne italiane cominciano ad essere particolarmente dedite alle loro carriere e professioni, quindi oltre i due figli cominciamo ad avere problemi anche noi uomini per programmarne di più. There is a problem here, no children. No children. I can I can solve that. You can solve that. I can, yes, I can. You? Yes. <laughs> you see? Yeah, Does she want to have some of my children? Ask Two her. Children. Are there any women here who'd want my babies? Married or single? Single preferably. <laughs> she actually took me seriously. <laughs> what about her? No, no, no. She doesn't believe in Farindola. I have often, I've tried to do my bit. <laughs> this birth rate problem is not just limited to small Italian towns either. It's affecting the whole continent. Europe desperately needs more people. But it seems not to want the thousands of refugees and asylum seekers who are being smuggled every night by the Albanian Mafia to the beaches here on the heel of Italy. The Italian police have responded to the immigration crisis in the only way the Italians know how. 
they've got themselves some really cool sunglasses. Oh yeah, and some really fast boats. Designed by powerboat racing teams, these things can do 80 miles an hour. They have to go that fast just to keep up with the smugglers' boats. It all sounds like a game, but as night falls, you realize just how serious it is. Word has just come in that a that a boat has left Albania. They've picked that up on radar, and uh, once they've stowed the pizza boxes, the police will be setting off in, in hot pursuit. This part of the Med is now an aquatic racetrack, echoing every night to the howl of highly tuned engines. It's a high-tech game of cat and mouse, where the prize is freedom. Unfortunately, we're marooned in the middle of the sea and we can't go anywhere because the radar's broken. And it turns out it's a little fuse, so I'm getting the bits of silver paper out of my cigarette packet, which they're using to make a connection. Meanwhile, half of Albania is tearing past us and we're blind. Eventually, the Italian electrics were fixed and once more, we were underway. This is the area of coastline that we're patrolling at the moment. It's only 90 kilometers long down in southern Italy. This is Albania. This is the 50 mile straight they call the Canal of Otrento. And last year they caught 14,000 people trying to come across here. And those are only the ones they caught. As well as radar, they use night vision goggles to find the smugglers. But then what? You can't shoot at boats full of refugees. You can't ask them to stop because they won't. So you have to ram them. And this sometimes goes wrong. L'anno scorso c'è stata una una collisione tra un un gommone nostro della polizia di stato e un gommone che trasportava dei clandestini e a seguito della quale sono morti 14 cittadini albanesi e tre poliziotti sono rimasti gravemente feriti. How ruthless, how good are the Albanian Mafia at smuggling? Quindi hanno investito molto in questi traffici e hanno affidato le loro imbarcazioni a scafisti che oltre che essere bravi nella, nella navigazione sono anche senza scrupoli e in più di un'occasione noi siamo dovuti intervenire per salvare i clandestini che rischiamo di annegare perché abbandonati in mare dal, dagli scafisti albanesi per coprirsi la fuga. It really is a war out here, a war the smugglers are winning. This 40,000 pound rib was captured by the police only last night and they now own it. It was carrying 40 immigrants when it hit the beach just up the coast from here. 30 have escaped and are now somewhere at large in Italy. 10 have been captured. And this is where they'll end up. In the camp of a thousand broken dreams, waiting to be sent back to wherever they came from. Prostitutes, however, are allowed to stay in Italy, providing they give evidence against the pimps who are running them. This deal makes the priest who runs the camp a prime target for the smugglers. He agreed to talk to me, but only if I took him for a spin in the E-Type. I assured him that my gladiatorial skills would keep us safe, but even so, we were accompanied by his ever-present bodyguards. The first thing he told me about was the Albanian Mafia's brutality. 
ma la crudeltà della mafia albanese la si legge sul corpo delle donne che io difendo, donne che sono state non solo violentate, non solo bruciate in tanti modi, ma sfruttate in un modo incredibile. La crudeltà si vede proprio nella sofferenza di questa gente. La dimostrazione della crudeltà è nel pianto di queste donne che io difendo. It seems to me that Europe has always had people coming and going, always. Is this just the latest chapter? Il concetto è un altro, la gente va dove c'è il denaro. Intanto questa gente non la fermerà mai nessuno. Quindi i poveri non li fermerà nessuno perché non li può fermare né la frontiera né la polizia. Non c'è dubbio che loro arrivano qui nella speranza di non essere presi dalla polizia. Nel momento in cui vengono presi dalla polizia vengono rimediati, in, rimandati in 24 ore nel proprio paese di provenienza. Ma le organizzazioni criminali hanno superato anche questo problema. Nel senso che chi paga per un viaggio se viene rimpatriato ne può fare altri due gratis. Five years of public school training versus... I decided to join some of the inmates for a game of table football. No! Well, what else could I do? Um, oh. <laughs> We have a word for you in England. Certainly there was no point asking them why they want to come and live in Europe. I give in. 3-0, wipes out. Europe is the global standard bearer, even today, of civilization, decency, humanity, democracy, style, good food, good wine, great art, everything. Why do these people want to come and risk it all to live here? Well, when you look back over the last five weeks at all that I've seen and done, you have to ask yourself a question. Wouldn't you? This is not America. Well, uh, hop, uh, up. Devil, rabbit, rabbit. You don't like my country? I love France. I adore France. This isn't America. It's so much better. Mm, that was fantastic. This is world class smoking. You simply won't find. Whoa! It's a piss! It's a piss! <laughs> They are slowly, look, everybody's going slowly. He's a prime minister. When he goes on holiday, he's in a tent. <laughs> right, where's the next one? Oh, brilliant. We go 31, I'm going to go. <laughs> And so now we're at journey's end. The car has made it in one piece and I've made it in one piece. But I've changed. I've realized that Europe is a salad. French onions, Italian olives, German sausage, chocolate sprinkles from Holland and some stolen Spanish fish. Lots of different ingredients which together make a fantastic whole. I started this series as a little Englander.